approach yoga and people be- perceive yoga just as a physical practice but there's many other elements to yoga um, so people come to a class to get out of their monkey mind out of their thinking mind and start to feel into their body and that's the first step um, uh, and as people start to feel into their body um, they they begin to feel um, that they have um, they can change things in their body um, um, so it's about energy and it's also about quietening that thinking mind and realizing that we're actually a lot more than just our thoughts yes so it gives you that whole relaxation in a busy kind of world. Absolutely. So a lot of the business ladies who are listening to us now, they could benefit from doing some yoga. Absolutely. It's, especially at those stressful times. Yeah, yeah, yes. And it's and it's tuning in, it's tuning the world out, yep. tuning into your breath. And uh, the breath is a very important part of certainly the way that I teach yoga. It's linking movement with breath um, and it's learning to breathe well. Yeah. A lot of us breathe at the top here of our lungs, getting very anxious. Anxious. In fact, the lungs are quite an enormous yeah, exactly. organ, and we've got to take it right <laughs> down deep into, into exactly. the bottom of our lungs. And that, I suppose, could then help people with, because uh, I, I, I'm an asthmatic, and I actually play the trumpet, which has always helped with that kind of breathing. Uh, but it does help you when you've got kind of breathing issues. Absolutely. I do a uh, chair yoga class at um, Ekerehuna, um Health Centre on yeah. a Monday. Um, I've got a lot of ladies who sit on chairs and we lift arms and I've sat with the lady that does the breathing exercises with them she's a, a registered breathing expert um, and I've made sure that that which I teach is ma- marries up with what she does and, oh, yeah. and, and it does um, so very much um, people have already said hey listen I'm breathing better and I'm also sleeping better because I'm breathing well yeah I think that's key and I actually notice as well when I'm not I've not played the trumpet for a while and my breathing isn't as good because mm-hmm. um, you do actually have to regulate your breathing a lot and when you practice so yeah I can see why yoga would be the same sort of thing it would be so it's essential for you know getting your well-being going cool um so if you just tuned in now you're listening to nothing personal with nikki king i've got liz kirkland from ears to you and emma elliott from begin where you are yoga she's come all the way from ekaduna that's amazing so um and um yeah. <laughs> and liz is liz is an ear nurse and um emma is a yoga teacher so um why do you what drew you to ears liz Oh my goodness, I kind of fell into it really, yeah. I suppose. Um, when I was doing my nursing training um, and I was doing my last placement, an opportunity came up within the Wairapa to work for an audiology company Right. and it was suggested that I apply for the role and I kind of thought I'd had a, a few health issues in my nursing training years myself and I was kind of like, you know, do I really want to have to do shift work at this point in time? Yep. So I figured I'd apply for the role and thought it'd be a nice cruisy job that you could just <laughs> slot into. And look, four and a half years later, I absolutely love it. Um, it's where I was meant to be. Yeah. And it's just, I just find the whole, the ear is so intricate and, and its connection to the brain and the hearing and, and how it actually functions just totally fascinates me. And I like to make a difference. You know, my mission statement is making a difference one ear at a time. Yes. Um, and, and that's what I do, you know, every day. So Yeah, and your hearing is so precious. I mean, I'm a musician. I don't know what I'd do without my hearing. It, it would just, you know, so it pays to take care of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Emma, what, what drew you to yoga? I've been uh, doing yoga since um, I did my OE, um, leaving uh, England and coming this way. Actually, I ended up in Australia. And in the late 80s, the only book that you could get on yoga was a a, a book by BKS Iyengar called Light on Yoga. And I self-taught myself um, for uh, many years. And then at the age of 50... I decided that I'd become a yoga teacher. Uh, It had been part of my life for so many years and I had loved it. I just thought I'm going to share this with as many people as I possibly can. And that is where I've ended up. So I did my training um, three years ago. 
up in Auckland. I'm going to do some more training this year. Um, so um, very much enjoy it. And at the moment, it's a very small business. I do it for the love of it. Um, and I'm just growing as a teacher um, and, and growing my um, base, my support base, my, my client base also. But isn't it wonderful that we can, uh, I know a lot of people have come to the careers later on in life and become self-taught because that's that's where I'm at with um, a lot of the stuff that I do. And it's you've got so much more time and passion to put into it than you're not distracted mm-hmm. like you are when you're mm-hmm. quite young, you know. I, I spent many <laughs> years in, in corporate business in London. Yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> and um, uh, and yoga was the thing that actually kept me very balanced. Yes, um, I was the person. I had a bad back, um, but I'd go to the toilet and I'd do a little bit of yoga and feel much better. And it was the thing that brought me balance. And I just thought, oh, I need to share that with 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 people. Yes, well, that's I definitely need to get some yoga then because I sit at my desk, I get aches and pains from being sat too long, and just being able to have some tools to deal with that and make that feel better would be you know, definitely an invaluable thing for yes. me. And I, I really believe that as my business grows and as I become better as a teacher, um, that I'll be able to offer sort of one-to-one um, and that yoga can, can become a therapy. Yes, no, that's that's cool. And I think, you know, the music even is like that, you know. Absolutely. Anything that Im- improves your well-being is just an amazing thing. Cool. So um, so have you always been an ear nurse, Liz? Or, is the, or uh, have you, did you do something before nursing? Uh, so I did something before nursing. So before nursing, I was in hospitality. Oh, so right. we ran a bed and breakfast uh, on the Capity Coast and ran seven holiday apartments for um, various people. Wow. So kind of, you know, just looking after people and making sure they were happy and things like that. And also while I was over in the Capity Coast, I did six years with the Volunteer Fire Brigade. What? So you've been a firefighter as well. Yeah, now I'm learning I things have. about you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, you know, interesting when you look at um, heading into a nursing, you know, I'm just turned 50 at the beginning yep. of this year. So, you know, my nursing started a bit late in, in my career as well. But, you know, when you look back on the things that you used to do and, yep. and you can actually see how you managed to get where you are today. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, I look back at the firefighting days, and, and I really miss it. You know, yeah. I still have a passion for that. You know, first on scene trauma situation. But when I look back, although yes, I fought fires, and, and yes, you did other things, but we did a lot of medical, we did a lot of car accidents, and yeah. I always found myself within patient care. Yeah. You know, or I was always looking after the family members, making sure they were okay, and, and letting them know that we were doing all we could to, you know, help their loved yeah. ones. So. For me, going into nursing and doing what I do now, it's it's just putting that whole caring yes. thing into play and yep. just in a different realm, really, I suppose. I suppose it sort of made it more concentrated into an area that you're really passionate about. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's not cool. Yeah. I never knew you were a firefighter. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, Emma, you mentioned you did corporate for a long time. What did you do before you did yoga? Uh, here's, the, here's the link to New Zealand. Um, my last corporate job was for McLaren Cars. Oh, my word! No way. <laughs> what fascinating <laughs> women that were. Can I interrupt? <laughs> I'm Bruce McLaren's niece. Oh, no, are you really? I am. How funny. <laughs> <laughs> so there you so go. We've got connections oh, already. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, I worked um, at the uh, factory in Woking um, where uh, the race team were, but we also made a supercar with Mercedes. Pen Benz called the SLR, um, and I was the um, I was in purchasing, oh my and <laughs> I used to make sure that all the consumables that were needed on the um, production line were available. Um, oh. Yes, um, it was a very male-dominated oh, I bet. Um, industry. Big egos, I bet. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> but a real, you know, it's one of those things that that um, uh, I stepped into. I loved um, and was quite happy to step out of. Yeah. And, and prior to that, I'd been in uh, fast-moving consumer goods with yeah, people like um, uh, um, Bird's Eye Walls, which yep. is now Unilever. Yeah. Um, um, so all big corporates. Yeah. So it's quite stressful, I would imagine, absolutely. in fast-moving absolutely. consumable goods. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm ex-hospitality, and I've done, uh, st- you know, can appreciate where you guys have come from. But those things bring, those bring, all the things that I've done, I've done lots of jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none, brought skills 
to my business. Mm, and I bet absolutely. you're finding that you're using those yes. skills every I studied um, textiles at university, and um, my first job was um, for Topshop uh, on the buying <laughs> floor, shop. buying floor of Topshop in, wow. in London. And 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 whole, those skills I took to fast moving consumer yes. goods, and those skills I took to McLaren cars, and those skills I now I still use in my voluntary work in Ekaterina, and I um, um, but also. You know, just managing stress, knowing how to be. Yes. Um, I now look after children, which is completely the other se- <laughs> side of the, the, the um, spectrum. But yes. um, all, all applicable skills. Yeah, because you work for um, Power, is it? Power? I do. They're a yes. bit like paws. Yes, they are. They yeah. are. Um, so, I, yes, I look after four children uh, in my own home, four days a week. Um, probably the most rewarding job I've ever done in my life wow. um, is making a difference to children's lives. Um, I don't get paid an awful lot for it, no. but I love it. Yeah, so I think you do have to be a, a, ch- a children's person, you know, to, to do that kind of thing. Mm. And, you know... When there all the people that were involved with my children at kindy, you know, they were just amazing people who had such passion for um, making sure those kids had um, great days at kindy. Mm. I think yeah. I think if you've had your uh, for me, I had my children late. Yeah, I had my first child at forty, and um, so I had a, a, a whole raft of life before children. And um, so for me, it's been lovely to focus wholly on children for the last. Um, 12 years of my life oh, that's fantastic well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play um, the new single by Looking for Alaska um, they uh, they messaged me last week and told me they'd got a new single out uh, so we're going to have a listen to that now um, and this is called Calling Out brilliant lovely song
You've just been listening to Looking for Alaska, and that's calling out. And you're listening to 92.7 Arrow FM on this Monday morning. And in the studio this morning, I've woken up now and now I remember everybody. It's Liz Kirkland from Ears to You and Emma Elliott from Begin Where You Are Yoga. Um, and now I'm going to ask you something a little bit more about your business. So have you got any big plans coming up for your business? Have you got any future um, changes, Liz? <laughs> Um, well, I think this year for me is all about uh, growing the business. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, health and wellness I find are really important and accessibility to health services is kind of, you know, number one. Yeah. So this year I'm kind of concentrating on, you know, I have my base clinic at Marston and Medical yes. three days a week. So I'm there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I've just introduced a Saturday clinic. So I've partnered with Life Pharmacy uh, here in Queen Street in Masterton. And we're going to be running Saturday clinics out of their consultation room on a Saturday. And that's fantastic for commuters. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, so this is our first Saturday that we're going to be running at this coming Saturday on the 21st. So, you know, we've only had a very short window for advertising. Yes. So it'll be touch and go, but, you know, it can only grow. Um, I'm also kind of wanting to look at how I can get into other locations. So, you know, how can I do a clinic in Greytown on a yes. Saturday? You know, how can I get in? You know, I, I have a clinic in Martinborough, uh, which I do every couple of months within the medical centre there. But I want to be able to get in and actually do it on a Saturday. So, um, you know, to capture, A, like the commuters that are in those areas, but also to catch those people that come in from Wellington. Exactly. You know, everyone's so busy working. It's like, oh, hey, look, I'm in here shopping with my wife. Gosh, she's in a dress shop. She's in veranda yet again. I'm going to go and get my ears done while she's shopping. <laughs> yeah, and the thing you know? is, I think access to healthcare, it needs to change to when people are around because people are working such long hours now, you know, and uh, they've got their kids quite often or, you know, that, that if you do sort of go to where they can access the healthcare, I think you will be on to a winner. Absolutely. And, and I mean, you know, I look at my company name, Ears to You, and that literally means that I can come to you. Yeah, because that know? was a big concept when we were looking at the beginning of oh, your business. I was absolutely. there. Absolutely. Cool. When you were making my logo and, <laughs> and trying to, you know, capture my heart, which we yes, did yeah. um, really well. But, um, you know, I get out into the rest homes and yes. I can go and do palliative, you know, home visits or if someone's in the hospital. And, and they're struggling you know I can take all my equipment into the hospital and we can do it on site. That's amazing that's a really valuable um, service to be able to offer to people especially like going into the hospice or something like that you know a very important sort of and sort of emotional time for people when they don't really want to be going sitting in a room full of people. Yeah absolutely. Exactly. So. Yeah. So what about you, Emma? You, you mentioned earlier when we were talking before the show that you were branching into something from yoga. So what are your plans? Yeah, so um, uh, I've had run an successful event um, over a couple of days where I've married um, yoga and food. Yoga so and the, food. So there's a site of food which um, is called Ayurveda. Yep. Um, and it's almost like the yoga of food. So certain food types um, uh, are, are good for certain body types. Um, and very much hoping to start to run events um, over weekends where uh, we can combine yoga, meditation and eat beautiful, healthy, vegan food at the same time. 
Oh. Share community, share experience, um, and um, lots of uh, laughter in between. So, are you a vegan? No, I'm not. No, but I think um, probably I only eat meat maybe twice a week. Yep. Um, it's very much uh, reducing. Yes. Um, and I think as your yoga journey progresses. Yes. Certain things just start falling away yes. because they don't serve you anymore. No, no. Um, uh, I'm at that pl- in that place with alcohol at the yes. moment. Um, is that it doesn't? I don't. I love it at the moment uh, in the, when it happens, but it doesn't serve me very well no. at three o'clock in the morning no. when I feel it in my gut. No. Um, um, so yes, my diet um, is um, very healthy. Um, um, I have two growing boys, yes. um, so meat does feature in my house because <laughs> they need it. They do. And they, if anything like my middle boy, they love it. <laughs> Absolutely. My middle boy, is a, he loves meat. Honestly, I, when we've tried to go vegetarian or be more vegetarian, he always has to complain about that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we have to take those things into account, I suppose, with families. Yeah, so um, so marrying the yoga with a, a, a with food is um, something that um, I'm quite passionate about. Um, uh, I love festivals. Yes. I'd love to see myself um, getting onto a festival circuit with both yoga and food. Um, uh, uh, I've started to introduce music into my uh, yoga classes. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, and that's not live music at the moment, but again, I have um, plans to perhaps change that. Fantastic, yeah, because, um, you know, uh, is it that, that, there's a quite a few wellbeing festivals happening now because WOMAD have a big wellbeing centre because I know that A.D. McMaster, who's another lady in our group, she goes along to WOMAD with Marty Girl products every year. Yes. And it's a big focus on sustainability. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We're great. Um, me and my boys are great WOMAD uh, fans. We yeah. go uh, most years. Yeah. Um, uh, absolutely love it. Fantastic. Um, so th- that's quite interesting, eh? That, um, so the food is coming along to the session or are you encouraging healthy eating or so um uh i won't include food really within my day-to-day yeah. yoga pr- um, classes mm. although i have at the end of term done a, a sort of end of term celebrating with my um with my uh, the, the people that come to my yeah. class and offered food to them and yeah. we just have that there's a term in yoga called sangha it's about community it's yes. about joining and when you join with people and you share food with them yes it is a a, a, a great thing um uh, to build your community so the yoga and the food is looking at body types and what's working for you yes cool yeah. so yeah so in Ektahuna that is a great opportunity get yourself or even from the surrounding places it's not such a long way up there no no I I, I have um, contacts within Masterton um, I'm part of the Open Soul Collective yes uh, which um, Talitha and Karina oh, yep. uh, originally set up um, so we're very much um, uh T- talking with each other um we share venues um uh i come down and teach yoga sometimes with open soul collective oh, right, um, yeah. and they come up and see me and um be part of uh, the events that i have already run oh cool so you can come down to masters we need to keep an eye on you do you have a facebook page i do um so the facebook page is begin where you are yoga yeah um that's the main page um and then just this new idea of marrying food with yoga live yoga love food is the other you'll be able to see some pictures of a rather fabulous event that we held at ekarahuna campground a little while ago now um well perhaps perhaps it's time to have a a festival in ekarahuna indeed because it is, it's on its up. I, it, I've got a number of clients up there already, um, and the business, the business area, you know, it seems to be growing. So yeah, so uh, Ekaterina, watch this space. I reckon. Okay, so um, so so I'll, I'll come back to you actually. So you're doing yoga and you're looking after kids. Mm-hmm. What sort of thing do you do in your downtime? I'm part of a small community, <laughs> so um, there's lots of volunteering to, to be done. Um, I uh, am part of a, a group of ladies that have set up a um, play group. We set it up about four years ago. We, st- we stepped away from the play centre model yes. um, and created our own little play group in Ekatahuna. Um, we've been uh, very lucky that the school has given us um, a, a building for the last... Um, 
uh, many years, f at least five years, um, and that building is actually um, uh, on the disposals list with Ministry of Education. So in my downtown at the moment, I'm looking for new premises. I'm right. working with this group of ladies to make sure that we continue to have a play group in Ekaterhuna. Well, it's very important that people can have a place to meet when they've got young children because you can be quite isolated. Absolutely. Can't you? So both for parents, obviously, we've got the children, the full first uh, part of our mind, but also for the parents. Yes. Um, Ekaterhuna has a very um, thriving school. Um, when I first arrived in New Zealand seven years ago, the school had 80 children. It now has over 130. Wow. And um, so our playgroup is actually the only place where these children can meet, meet their peers before they go to school, which is a, um, uh, a reason why we want to very much carry it on. So amongst the group, there's a fantastic girl called Skye. She's been applying to MPs. And um, so we're, we're actually got meetings this week um, with Kieran McNulty who's coming up to, oh, cool. to, to see us to make sure that we've got some power behind our, um, yes. uh, our, our campaign to make sure that the playgroup continues. Yes, that's right. Um, so in a small community, you find that you have to be more involved in... The yes, well, if uh, I, I'm a great believer in the in the saying from Gandhi, be the change you want to see. Exactly. I think if you want to see change, you've got to be the person that uh, makes that happen. And, and, that and I think I think uh, traditionally, perhaps some of these older communi these communities were run by perhaps the older ladies of the district <laughs> <laughs> but I think we need to make sure that the youth is very much in the forefront of those uh, you might not think I'm youthful at 53 but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know a, 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 a younger voice needs to be heard within our communities I think there's some great advocates for young people um, I know that uh, when I, I've been doing these festivals for grassroots Act their younger people um, because the, the corporates are taking over music and it's not getting heard quite so much. So that's when, when I was doing Gladstonebury, that was at the forefront of my head. Um, and th there was a lady that came along to Waimea when we did the summer party and she said there has to be advocacy for younger people. Because there's a lot of it, the population is aging, you know, mm. and you know mm. we've got to, and you're as young as you feel anyway. But at 46, <laughs> I'm still a rock chick, <laughs> you know. We still get out and do these things, eh? So, Liz, uh, what do you do when you're not looking in ears? Gosh, well, unfortunately, no, I should say fortunately, I've decided to do a diploma of small business and project oh, management yes. this year. So um, my downtime is taken up with that. Yes. Um, although I have found it really exciting because it's helped me to identify where I want to go with the business and, um, and things that are getting in the way. Yes. So uh, that's kind of been really good. We've also got a 10-acre uh, lifestyle block, which we just about four years ago and, and built a new home on. So um, I'm very much a city farmer. Yes. So we're doing landscaping, um, things like that, and that seems to take up a lot of time. You know? Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, and you know, as, you know, you talk about yoga, and uh, everyone says to me that I, I can never shut off my mind. It's always going. You know, I need to practice more mindfulness. I need to to become quiet and do, and do yoga. And, you know, I've tried it in the past and I stand there and I, you know, I do this particular pose and I go, I've really got things to be doing. You know, I've got washing to do. I've got things to do. This is so silly. I can't just stand here. And I, and I have to stop. So listening to you kind of saying that you teach people how to do that, what do you say to a busy person who just does not like to shut off? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm interested in that because I'm a I bit personally, like that. I personally don't think you need to come to a yoga class to practice yoga. I think you can do yoga in your own home. And if you're in your garden, doing your gardening, and you're focusing wholly on your gardening and not letting lists and I must do enter into your head, then that in itself is yoga. Yes. Mm. So I'm a bit like that when I do music and very immersed uh, and everything else stops and that's why it's it's almost like a um, uh, I've said this a number of times on the show an antidepressant yes. it's actually something that I need yes. and I notice it when I don't do it, um, it it's grounding yourself yeah. in the right hemisphere of your brain exactly. the left hemisphere of your brain is all about the past and the future the concerns about the past the worries and the worries about the future if you can ground yourself in your right brain then that in itself is is yoga. Being present in mm, it, it is, is it yoga, is. and the and the stretching that adds to that is 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 just then 
being able to feel how your body is. I'm a, you know, and and and, and so you're get, getting out of here and you're starting to get into your heart and into your gut. And there's a lot of intuition in your gut yes. that we just don't need, that we just don't listen to. Something like ninety percent of your serotonin comes from your gut. From the, so that mm. it comes from the vagus vein, goes up to your head, and so looking after these, just staying holy in your mind, isn't the place to be. You've got to no. be here in your heart. You've got to be here in your gut. No, that's right. And I, 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 that's quite interesting about the stretching because I read a, when I first started out in business, I used to get really intimidated about going to pitch to clients, going to meet clients. And um, I watched a TED talk about this. This woman was like, you know, what I do. She said it was like a bit like fake it till you make it. But she said also women tend to make themselves very small. And she was saying you need to spread your arms out, make yourself big before you go to a meeting so that you feel big when you walk into mm. the meet. And I, I do practice mm. that if I'm going to go into an intimidating meeting mm. i'll be sat in the car with my arms like this <laughs> but it works mm. it mm. sort of makes your brain think that you're bigger than you are mm. so i think i can totally take that on board that what you're saying there that's completely interesting but yeah i think you know you just got to get perhaps you get into yoga when you're poking in the ears well i do you know and i was thinking about that as you're saying it you know when i when i'm in a client's ears i'm solely focused on what i'm doing and I'm in the moment and I'm present and, and I'm, I'm listening to them tell me stuff, you know. And, and I, I work in a really privileged environment. And I think because I, I am very therapeutic and holistic in my clinic practice is they tell me things that they don't necessarily tell other people, mm. you know, whether it be a health issue or whether it be about their grandchildren or whatever the case may be. So um, that makes me grounded mm. yet when I'm home my mind is incredibly mm -hmm. busy so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so um I always ask this and I know you're gonna have to nip off because you've got your first client at 10 30 mm -hmm. so uh, but it would just be me and Emma after that but we've got plenty to talk about um but I'd like to ask what's your favorite thing about the wire wrapper oh the favorite thing about the wire wrapper oh look I'd have to say the snow capped Tararuas oh, that's very that topical. I get to see from my lounge window. <laughs> um, oh look, I think when I first moved to the wire wrapper, I was very uh, disillusioned. I think with the the lack of entre entrepreneurial people. Yes. Within you know, we moved here what, about nine years ago, I think something like that. Um, and but the interesting thing I found over the nine years is that actually there's a lot of people who are stepping out and going into business yes yes you know and and we're creating more jobs and we're creating new exciting things within the wire wrapper um and you know i think that some people sit back and they're too afraid to actually take a step forward and take a chance you know everything we do no matter you know whether we decide to incorporate our food into our yoga or whatever is is everything is a risk yes you know and if we don't if we don't have the strength to take that risk, we're never yep. going to know. No, that's you know? right. So um, I think at the moment, it, as much as I love the weather and it's a microclimate here and, yep. and we've got, you know, lovely wineries and we've got so many things to actually do, is it's the people that are coming into the wire wrapper and the people that are actually stepping up from the wire wrapper and, and using local product and local knowledge to actually bring our community, you know, up and up and getting named in, in New Zealand which is wonderful it is it's a, it's a very vibrant community and it is a real community um, I've no, I love that about Wairapa that there, and there are so many in, in enterprising people now like you say meet them every day in my job they turn up You've got some quotes uh, that you wanted to in oh, incorporate. Look, I have, and you know, I'm I'm still kind of blown away by the whole <laughs> fact that you know this lovely lady worked for the McLarens. Um, <laughs> but you know, with Bruce being being my uncle, yep. and, and one of his top sayings was um, that he feels life is measured in achievement, not in years alone. Yes. You know, and and I think he's right. You know, he died very young. Yes. But he took risks and he put things in place so that the McLaren name is still continuing. Yep you know now exactly um and another one scrolling facebook as you do in the morning with your coffee and a quote came up from a girlfriend of mine in the cavity coast and it says here be the woman so be the woman who fixes another woman's crown without telling the world it was actually crooked 
Exactly. I think that's a very true thing. You know, and I think as as women, we actually need to be able to empower other women. Exactly. Without making a big deal about it and propping them up from the sidelines instead of being a headline. Exactly. I think that's that's very correct. Um, that you know we need to be supporting each other. Yep. So, um, what's your favourite thing about the Wairapa? I have to say it's the skies. The skies are amazing. It's the, uh, <laughs> the open skies. It's that sense of space. Um, having come from uh, England, the UK, I am very aware of um, being hemmed in by greyness. And uh, it, it absolutely marvels me how much blue sky I see here <laughs> during the winter. Exactly. Love it. And it's such a, a, an amazing colour of blue, isn't it, mm. compared to the UK. Whereabouts in the UK did you live? So um, I was uh, born in uh, Aldershot, yes. home of the British Army. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and I grew up in a place called Farnham. Yes. Uh, which is a small market town just south of um, London. Yes. Um, but... Uh, uh, been here now um, eight years. Yes. This is home. Yes. My boys are New Zealanders <laughs> um, and I uh, absolutely love it. I love the fact that the Wairarapa is so close to Wellington. Exactly. And I love Wellington. Uh, the fact that I can dip in and get my city fix um, for just two hours away is fantastic exactly we've got the best of both worlds here isn't it because that's what we found being musicians we can come and do the lazy gigs over here or we can go off and do gigs over in wellington and hit the big venues down there we're so privileged to be so close and to have the commuter link i think is uh, very valuable it makes this area what it is mm-hmm. so it'd be really be it's important to keep that i think there's a lot of debate going on at the moment about the masterton 10-year plan So I reckon people should get in and have the put their submissions in if they've got strong feelings about what the council is proposing. I did that this morning, um, and it's quite a simple process. So you can have your voice on the future of Wire Rapper. Um, And you know, if you don't, as somebody was saying, one of you ladies, if you don't go and make your voice heard and be the change, change. then you have got no excuse when the change is not what you like, really. So I am a big advocate in democracy and getting out there and getting your voice heard. So um, as as a woman, is there any particular difficulties you've overcome in your career? Um, Emma? Um, not in my current career. No. Uh, but certainly when I was working for McLaren <laughs> in Woking, um, being a woman... Um, I went through that whole process of, um, I don't play golf. Oh, gosh, I can't network (laughs) because I don't play golf. Um, um, And asked my managers for golfing lessons, which were refused as a woman. (laughs) That's no good, is it? Yeah. But golf is a very, in in England, it doesn't seem to be that way here, but in England it's a very, very um, sexist Mm. sport. Yes. And uh, I remember being in in an Indian restaurant, me and my husband were having a, a, a... a meal, and uh, some people they were, they were saying, "Oh, the women are not allowed on the, the the golf course at particular times, and not allowed in the club at particular times." And it was really winding. My husband had never heard this before, <laughs> and he was winding them up, you know. So it was like, but yeah, it's it's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I find that yeah, particularly yes, weird. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't seem to happen, and I think probably because when people came over to New Zealand, they had to just get in there the women have been tough here I absolutely think. and uh, the, the, uh, what's really heartened me when I moved here was that there was the New Zealand was pioneers in women's suffrage so you know we've got we've, we've got a good standing here but still a lot of work to do I think for women um, just in general in the world <laughs> absolutely and what, so have you encountered any particular Oh, I, not so much now, but I mean, I can remember when I was a PA to uh, a certain gentleman in Wellington and he he degraded women, you know, and I can remember one day um, I had to get his lunch or organise something and, and I'd given them the wrong fork and he literally threw the fork at me and said, oh, you know, you're just a stupid girl. <gasps> and, and, you know, I was jeepers i'd had my children so i was 30 yeah that's you know wrong, I look i think it? it has changed and yep. and you know i think that that's not a general depiction no. but it, it it definitely kind of makes you feel that you're less um valuable than a man yes but now it's kind of like actually you know what 
turn 50, I'm powerful. You know, I can do what I like. If I make mistakes, I make mistakes. You exactly. Know, I think own up to my mistakes and just keep moving forward. Really, I think women do become quite empowered as they get older. Absolutely, yeah. there's that cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Um, maiden mother crone. Yeah. When you come into <laughs> your crone, you know, when you come into <laughs> your crone years, you know there yeah. is there is a, a, a power. There's a, this power that you feel inside of you that you can really mu- achieve quite a lot of things yeah. as you get older. So yeah, so you know, women we do we, we mature very well I think think so So what I'm going to do now is because Liz is going to get off and see her first client lucky whoever that is so if you want to see Liz she's at Masters in Medical Mm -hmm. um, and she does ear clinic there and if there's a group you can go out and see them at at home yep absolutely so and you've got a website yes so um, www.ears the new miracle 2 yes y-o-u yep dot co dot nz so ears to you yep um, but just with the number two, not the, the word two. Yep. Um, and look, my clinic's open for everybody. You know, um, I look after the elderly here. I look after the young children. Um, I have an amazing group of special angels that come and see me, um, you know, with a, with a whole lot of sort of conditions and stuff. But uh, for me, it's about, it's about not being afraid to come and see me for your ears. Yes. You know, I'm... Look, the one thing I can say, and, and one of the reasons I moved away from an audiology company, is I'm not going to force you into hearing aids. No. I don't test your hearing. I'm purely there to make sure your ears are healthy. You know, and in the last couple of months, we've identified a couple of cancers, and unfortunately, the cancers of the ear are asymptomatic, so you don't actually know about it until it's there. So for me, that's a real um, important thing. Yes. Is, yep. Okay. You can you can live with blocked ears. Sure. You can live with altered hearing, but would you rather that I identify and go, oh my gosh, you've got healthy ears, woohoo, come and yes. see me in a year? Or do you want me in a year to say, look, I'm sorry, we could have caught this growth earlier. You know, now we're a little bit too late. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to come and see me. I'm not scary. <laughs> no, and you're quite reasonably, quite reasonably priced. I am. Yes, yeah, so, so. you know, don't be put off, get along, and can, can a doctor refer you? Be ref- can they ref- oh, absolutely. The GPs yes. can refer me. Um, you don't need a referral. Just come in, you know, from yep. any medical centre. Um, you know, if you have an issue, if, if you come, you know, if you were to come in and see me, for example, and you maybe had an ear infection or something like that, I can actually ring your doctor um, and say, look, I've, I've seen Nikki today. This is her issue. Um, are you willing to write her a prescription? So I'm, I'm trying to cut down on the, you know, the precious GP time as well. Yes. Um, so to save them time, to save you having to go to them and... and spend extra money sometimes it doesn't work sometimes they want to see you but often they'll just go yep okay Liz we'll we'll get this and and can you follow up with her so it works really really well fantastic well so make sure you get your ears checked people go 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 um, go to the ears to you website or a facebook page um and you can give uh, Liz a ring or you can get an email her or contact her through the website but it's important and you know all these accessible clinics now you've not got an excuse Mm-hmm. So um, thanks for coming this morning, Liz. You're we'll welcome. hear more thanks from Emma me. after Groove Lagoon. I'm going to play Groove Lagoon shamelessly again. I love this band. Here it is. It's Shiver.
you're listening to 92.7 Arrow FM and um, you're listening to the Nothing Personal Show with Nikki King. And we've had in the studio this morning um, Liz Kirkland, who has now gone to her first client. And we've got Emma Elliott here from um, Begin Where You Are Yoga. And she's also a child, child um, she does childcare as well. I couldn't think of the right words there. So welcome again, Emma. <laughs> um, so... Um, so what we try and do is try and inspire women. We tell women's stories on this show. So have you got any messages for women starting out in business? What would you give them to inspire them? I think it's a, a, about self-belief. Yeah. It's about um, knowing that um, you are enough um, and that... Stepping into something, um, uh, it, it's okay to make mistakes, um, um, but you should just give it a go. Yes. Um, it took me to my 50th birthday to realise the dream of becoming a yoga teacher, which I had toyed with for so long. Um I was very much helped by the course, the teaching course that I went on yes. that gave me that self-belief that it was okay. And um, you're not going to conquer the world in your first uh, uh, year. No, um, that's very and true. That, um, you know, every, every step is the beginning of a, a, of a journey. It is. Uh, and it's those small steps that you can take um, that might that then you realise that everything changes all the time. It Nothing does. is constant. Um, and that uh, stepping out one day into your business will um, mean something a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. Don't be afraid of that change. Yes. Just embrace it. Um, I'm a great believer in positive thoughts. <laughs> yes, I know. Me too. Manifestation. Me too. I actually <laughs> believe that. I actually believe because I've done, people go, oh, you've done so many things. And, so, and it's like, it, you just got to believe that you can do it. And people go, oh gosh, you can do that as well. And it's like, well, you just got to do it. You just try it. How do you know you can't do it unless you try it? And you know, what's the worst that can happen? Absolutely, Nikki. Absolutely. What is the worst that can happen? Not, not. You know, and I stepped into having my own business when I was um, a few years ago, four years ago now. Um, I'd come from the UK. I'd been off with my children. For, I was a stay-at-home mum, um, and all my relevant UK experience was back in the UK. I hadn't worked for ten years, couldn't get a job, and so I decided to start my own business based on my passion for design and websites. And because my husband is a techie, and it was a bit like if you can't beat them, then you are going to have to join them. So. <laughs> ended up uh, we used to have a two computers and we'd message each other <laughs> so you know it's, it started from there really and that was my passion not that it's the same as yoga yoga sounds a much nicer passion to have <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I actually i keep hearing about yoga and i keep getting more and more intrigued about it as, as something that could help me manage you know busy days so i'm definitely going to get along to somebody's class somewhere <laughs> absolutely i can certainly put, point you in the direction of some fantastic masterton classes yeah There's, uh, lots of yoga out there in masterton there is yeah yeah there is um so um do you do you think um that we were talking there about women sort of not being very confident do you think that's a common thing for women that they feel like they're held back I do. Um, I think that's probably changing. I think uh, generations coming up now probably are more confident than perhaps I was um, uh, as a, a, a as a teenager. I think it's un unfortunate that women, um, uh, in their desire to start families, often have to take career breaks. Yes, and those breaks are then seen um, as uh, obstacles in yeah. In, I certainly felt progressing. that. I certainly felt that, and there were reasons why I took um, the steps to be a full time mother from my past, which they were they were, you know, nothing against having a career at all. It was just my choice, um, but it definitely counts against you when you come back to the workforce. They don't people don't seem to think that you've done anything yes <laughs> or that you have a brain yes uh, i mean i was very much like you nikki um um i had my children late i had rise to the levels of middle middle management yes um in my previous careers um had my children 
and then and wanted to stay at home. I wanted to be with them. Yes. Um, and my, the job that I stepped into was actually um, I was in Ekaterina. There was no childcare facilities available, so I created. I became that childcare uh, 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 center uh, in my own home to look after my son, uh, Sonny, before he went to school, yes. and other children um, uh, came along to join him. And that's I've a- never been trained as a <laughs> early childhood <laughs> education, but you know I've worked in corporate business. I've got a head on me. Yes, um, and um, and I've. Learned learned an awful lot um, in, in that business also. And how wonderful though that we've got the, the, the play group popped up and all that kind of thing from that as well so that's amazing really um, so if people wanted to come along to your classes they could go, have you got a website? I don't have a website at the moment, I'm just using Facebook. Yes, um, okay um, so they can go over to your Facebook yes, page and yeah. find out when your classes are um, and they could, your contact details are on there? Absolutely um, I'm uh, I teach on a, a really um, it's, it's Sunday afternoon uh, the whole of Monday I teach and then it's a Tuesday evening and a Wednesday evening and you'll see where the locations are on yeah. my Facebook page um, uh, I don't work with children on a Monday um, that's my yoga day um, and I look after children on the Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday Yes, so so, th- so you can go to those classes and there are various locations just in Akatona or around the area so um, just um, I've got uh, three classes in the just the Anglican Church Hall. Yes, I run a chair yoga class at Ekatahuna um, Health Centre, which yes. is for perhaps ladies that don't, ladies and gents that um, uh, don't want to get down onto the floor but want yep. to practice, still have a yoga practice. And then there's um, I also work out of the Turf Pavilion, which is on Huxley Street in Pahia Tua yep. um, on a, a Monday afternoon and a Tuesday evening yeah so like various locations you can catch up with emma well thank you very much for being an awesome guest this morning emma and thank you to liz who's now left she's been a fantastic guest and what amazing that you've got a connection there that was so fantastic you've been listening to 92.7 arrow fm and the nothing personal show with me nikki king next week i have definitely got the ekatuna special happening with two businesses up from up Ek- Ek- another two businesses from ekatuna what a thriving place that is so uh, we'll see you next week thank you very much for tuning in